welcome everybody to this week's episode of Main Street Business Podcast. And yes, the title of the show is correct. We are going to help you write your will during this podcast. You're yeah. welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and um, I've got news for everyone listening. You will die someday, and this might actually be helpful. I don't know if you do. <laughs> do you know that, what I thought but... you were going to say? Is <laughs> And if you're trying to do this while you're driving, you will die. So, <laughs> let, so, so let's not make sure. Suggested, not suggested. Yes. This is not meant to immediately be used. This is meant to be <laughs> later, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. This is... We want you to not need this will for a while. So let's not do it while we're driving or riding horseback or on a treadmill. What do people do when they listen to our podcast? They they do lots know. of fun things. Yeah. yeah. So really, just yeah. be safe. Or riding horses. That's what that's I'm sure someone rides a horse and listens to our podcast. If someone there's does. anyone out there doing this, please take a photo, share it on social media and tag us. That would yes. be amazing. Yes. Oh, we should ask that right now. Please send a picture of us of what you like doing when you're listening to our podcast. Of course, that is in good taste. Keep a PG-13. PG-13, All right. yeah. Okay. Corey, Corey's already over on his phone. Uh, now, you don't count because we already know what you you do something inappropriate. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, see, he, like uh, Stern, Howard Stern had Robin. I have Corey. Yeah, yeah. He's my there Robin. Yeah, so yeah. I can. Yeah. Um, well, right. let me say this so everyone knows, just in case you found this podcast, we are attorneys. I know, you know, we're, we're going to keep it light here because estate planning is so boring. It's yeah. one of the reasons no one does it. We're going to try and keep it light. We really want you to seriously complete a handwritten holographic will in today's episode. And we're real, real lawyers. We're not just yes. like lawyers on TV. We're real lawyers. Yeah. We want to be on TV. But yes, <laughs> and, and we are on TV once in a while on news, you know, interviews, true. but yeah. we haven't got a call for a sitcom or a yeah. Netflix movie or I'm just anything. waiting for them to be like, hey, Matt Sorensen, we got a movie about you. We want you to know if you want to play Matt Sorensen. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a double compliment. You're like, it you're going to do a movie like about me and I get to play myself. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All okay. Right. okay. All right. Tom Cruise is a little busy, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Now, before we get to our weekly tips, uh, and I've got a good one. I got a doozy, as one might okay. say. Um, as my mom might say, being in the 1950s, that's a doozy. Uh, we need you to prepare. So you need to get in a, a, a well-lit, relaxed space, turn off all the distractions. We are literally going to write your will with you here. Uh, on the podcast. Uh, so get a, a, I would say a lined paper. You don't want just a piece of paper out of the printer. <laughs> it's right. kind of funny nowadays, lined paper? Do I have lined paper anywhere? Okay, <laughs> if, if you don't, we'll survive. You're yeah. just gonna have you to- Engineers with your graphing paper, that's acceptable too. That is, a yellow pad would be fine. Uh, if you all you have is printer paper, just try to evaluate your horizontal flow of your writing so it doesn't end up you need to be straightened like a picture frame when you're done so get a piece of paper or two i think you're going to need at least three pieces of paper that's going to be my depending on now you could write very small which is fine yeah. okay yeah. you don't need it yeah i don't want any witnesses right now we're going to talk about notaries all that stuff this needs to be in pen i don't want a pencil what do you think matt any okay. other criteria yeah, I was wondering if you were going to drill down on the pen, man. You got all into the paper. What type of weight of paper should I be using? 20 pounds. Should I be using linen or, you know? I would. Uh, make, this, make it count. Okay. All right. Use yeah. some fancy paper. Yeah. Um, it could have, you know, it could be some scrapbooking paper with some little flowers in the corner too. That works yeah. also. Yeah. And I now I would like, this would be classic. Like if you saw the movie Knives Out recently, mm -hmm. uh, where they read the will for the family. Yeah. That's a big Direct. moment. So yeah, if you, I would recommend you have a envelope ready to go and you're gonna seal it after this is completed and put Ooh. upon my death, open with my family present. I like that. Because we're gonna drop some bombshells, baby. Yeah. Let's be, <laughs> yeah. Be Someone's getting cut here. Someone's, Someone's getting, getting cut. Now. Yeah, we're gonna help you write your will 
and we're going to be a beneficiary in it. But that's just yeah. a small provision. Uh, okay. No. All right. Let's okay. get to the tips. You got, okay. and then we can get into the. the you, you got All a right. tip? You want to go first? Or you... Well, mine's a little lighthearted. Do you want to give an official, like more legit? Tip? I have a tip that's on topic. Sometimes I like to be off topic, but this one's this topic is yeah. so big. I'm gonna. This is on topic. Okay. You're usually off amazing. base. Is there a difference between yeah. off base and off topic? Because I don't. Yeah. It depends on who you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your tip? We usually do a tax and legal tip, folks. And if you haven't yeah. gotten to our podcast, oh my word, we have got um, close to 2 million downloads now and uh, a lot of five-star ratings and 300 plus episodes. You're going to love it. So get back into the history. There are great tax and legal tips for small business owners. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll say it now. You can get over to our website, MainStreetBusiness.com. Uh, we're going to be launching a lot of new services on that site this year. Really excited about that. But that's where you can also get to the podcast, leave questions for the open forum show, which I think is in t next week, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So write a question on your small business tax, legal, building wealth, and us attorney tax, nice, just guy, nice guys. We'll do our best. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for those. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay, I'm gonna okay, give my tip. tip. Okay, this tip. is about when I was just joking about this. What if you want to cut a kid out? Oof. All right. And this is in my in the newsletter. I wrote an article on this. You have to be careful. The tip is you can't just leave them out. Let's say you got two kids. You got, you know, John and Jane. No, your two Cain, kids. Or Cain and Abel. Or Cain and Abel. Okay. <laughs> and you're like, all right, um, Abel's out. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you maybe that's not a good example. Will. Yeah. Maybe you had other kids than just Cain and Abel and Abel's out now. So you're like, Cain, I'm disinheriting you. What do you do? Yeah. Matt, let, Matt, let do you do just John leave him out? Let me just, let me just do John and Jane. Okay. okay. All right. All right. I, fine. I like, I like John and Jane. Let's not get too biblical here. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> John and Jane. Okay. Let's say that uh, John turns out to be a real piece of crap. All right. He's your kid. And you're just like, you know what? There's just, he, he hates me, whatever. We just don't have the relationship. And you're like, I don't want him to inherit my state. Well, what you cannot do is just write a will out and say, Jane gets my Everything. estate. Yeah. You can't just say that. You have to specifically say, if you have children that you want to disinherit, you have to say that. You have to say, I've got a kid, John. I got a kid named Jane. I don't want anything to go to John. I want everything to go to Jane. You need to specifically disinherit child. Um, the, the law presumes you forgot if you if you just say Jane gets my estate. They're like, oh, but you had this other kid. So you want to specifically disinherit. Um, that's a tip that might come in handy later as you're writing in your will here, who you don't want to get your estate. Now, again, your other, your cousins, your friends and everything, you don't need to disinherit them. But your kids in particular and your spouse, you can it's really hard to disinherit a spouse unless you had a prenup, but, um, but kids, you can just say it. Yeah. Now i like Matt's article because it wasn't just about disinheriting. It was about how to deal with problem children, because yeah. sometimes you may not want to disinherit a child, but you certainly don't want to put money in their hands when their life might be a wreck. So you say, okay, if they meet the following criteria, boom, 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 they can have X amount of dollars or a percentage of the estate. Maybe it's John and Jane and you're gonna give him half yeah. if he gets his act together. But you wanna be very clear about what the criteria is and the timeline. But we're gonna come back to that. Okay, now, mm -hmm. obviously you can tell in Matt's example, he chose John as the bad guy and his daughter in that example is not a teenager. Because if his daughter mm -hmm. was a teenager, he would have certainly disinherited the daughter. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, a, Matt that being be a, the odds would be in your favor, though. You know? <laughs> be, this, these like, are two fathers of daughters yeah. we love, but we just, when they were teenagers, we didn't love them as much, maybe. Is that okay yeah. to say? I think that's normal. Okay. All right. We're not right. surprising anyone there. Yeah, we're, we're not going not. out on a limb on that one. Yeah. Now, speaking of family, my tip is a little more lighthearted. I usually give a tax tip or legal tip, and... You know what? I'm going to give a tax tip here too. Let's say that you go to the level of doing a full blown estate plan, which we'll talk about a little bit today too. We want everybody listening to this podcast to write your will. We're doing it. We're doing it here in a minute. 
but you may want to do something a little more substantive because as we go through these questions, you're going to go, oh man, the will's okay. I'm going to finish it today, but I need to put on my checklist in 2021 to do my trust. Um, as long as you're doing some business succession planning, let's say you own a business or some real estate and you're doing some planning for your business affairs, I'd like to write off a portion, if not a lot or all of the cost to do your estate plan because you're doing it for the purpose of protecting your business and there's business purposes for that document. And I'm okay with that. I like that. So that's a I good like tax that. tip. Little tax yeah. tip. Because otherwise your ex expenses, you may pay a lawyer to do your estate plan would not be a deduction. Yeah. But for you business owners, real estate owners, I get some legal expense over there. Yeah. Now here's a side hustle tip. One in three Americans now have a side hustle. Millions of Americans are making money on the side with a small business. Well, do you want to include your side hustle in your will, in your estate? And go, hey, this little side hustle, this little trademark or this little product or service has some value. And I want to leave it to this particular person, family or not. And my will is protecting the value of that business by doing so. Well, now your side hustle can pay the legal fee for the document. I'm okay with that. I like that. I did not think you were going to go with that one. That's a new one. Okay. I mean, sometimes I've heard Mark's tips a couple times, and he's yeah. heard mine a few. But that was a new one. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. I was trying to wow you. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the tip. I Okay. Now, many of you know, if you're a regular listener to the show, our studio here in Idaho is right next door to a Main Street hair salon. Just quintessential Main Street America hair salon. So... Sometimes, because I want to look good for the show, for those that are watching on YouTube, I go over to the studio and I go, hey, ladies, I'm going on the air. Can you help me out? And we kind of have fun with this, you know. I'll sit down. Mm -hmm. They'll give me a little, you know, bouffant. You know, I'm sitting there <laughs> to all those blue-haired babes that are in there. They do a blowout and you're like, <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> I need a Brazilian blowout in 10 minutes. Let's go. So I went over there just to do my hair quickly for the show. And they go, oh, what are you doing today? And I go, well, we're recording the podcast. And they go, how's life? And I go, oh, good. In some areas, the rough in others. And she goes, and one of the ladies goes, I got a tip for you. And I thought I might share it here on the show just quickly. She said, okay, okay here's what it is. She goes, Mark, did you know in the spring and fall, there's more family drama than usual? And I go, I didn't know that. I just have constant drama. I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's any ebb or flow of this. Uh, but she goes, yeah, no. In spring and fall, you because it's a time of renewal or change, spring wow. and fall. And so you're thinking, you know, you're thinking school's starting or school's getting out and maybe there's just more emotion on the brain. I don't know. So she goes, here's what you need to do. I go, okay. She goes, you need to take your wife and or kids one by one <laughs> and go find a quiet spot and give them your undivided attention and just let them talk about what they're upset about. And she goes, it, it's going to be hard because it's mostly going to be about you. <laughs> <laughs> and you just need to, she had all these good words about this a safe place. You're just going to listen, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I go, I had this face through the whole thing. And she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, uh, what's this? What's in it for me? Besides, I just <laughs> ruined my day. Uh, why am I doing this? And she goes, well, they'll feel better. I go, the hell with them. What am I doing? <laughs> Who's going to listen to me? And she goes, well, this isn't about you. I go, why? You ladies are all crazy in here. You're, you're yeah. gonna, they're like, well, I wish my husband did that. I wish, and I, all these ladies are popping off going, you need to do that, Mark. Just go listen. I'm like, <laughs> you know, thank you. Thank you for. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I don't know. I just, I said, I'll be back after the show. You ladies better come up with some good reasons. Cause I'm not, I haven't yeah. bought what you're selling. And they're like, all right. Yeah. You know, Mark's tax and legal tips are much better than his self-help. <laughs> I agree. Drama tips, you know, I, <laughs> I mean, you can't be great at everything. I mean, just, you know, please. Maybe that the salon ladies have their thing and their tips. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But that's the, what they know. That's true. Because they know the drama. They hear the stories. I mean, yeah, the, probably some of the females on this listening to the show are like, well, Mark, absolutely. That would make your life so much better. I'm like, 
Yeah. Not seeing it well, yet. Maybe it's so, like, like ripping off the band-aid. Just get it out there. Just let them get it out there yeah, and then gonna, it's over and everybody feels better. Yeah, they're right? going to get it out there anyway. Why do I yeah. Just, yeah, just, yeah, just do it. find a place to sit there and take it? All right. Okay. All right. So, all right. so Will, are we ready? Okay. Yeah, let's hit it. Okay. Now, you, what you we're talking about here, and Mark's going to rattle off some states, we're talking about doing a holographic Will, which must be handwritten. You're not typing this sucker up, okay? Yeah, people. This must be in your handwriting, all right? You can do cursive. It's not required. You could do regular. <laughs> For those of you who want to go cursive. I know cool. some of you techies right. out there are like, I don't even have a writing utensil in this house. I can't use yeah. my... I know, and I know someone's going to say, can I write it on my iPad and then print it? No, don't do it. Not good. The laws in your state are not as fast as technology has developed, okay? Yes. We're talking a handwritten will. Okay, what well, you're going to indicate your name. Okay, hold it, hold it. Start. Yeah. Okay, at the top of this paper in yeah. big size 24 font, imagine your computer. Yeah. Right. Last, I'm going to do this with everybody. Last will. Okay, everybody. Mm -hmm. And you could probably do that on the first line. Last will and testament. Okay. All right. That's, well, you're let gonna... me get the legal requirements out and then let's start writing. Okay. You don't mind. Well, okay, I just well, every. Like... Okay. So people know what the hell has got to happen here. Okay. Well, I just wanted to get something on paper. So everybody, last will okay. and testament. Now put the pen down. Matt's going to tell you where we're headed. Okay. okay. Give us the roadmap. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be, I'm going to lecture a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right. You're going to, it must include your name. All right. Okay. The date. And you must sign it. I actually had a probate case of someone who did a handwritten will that committed suicide right after writing it didn't sign it <sighs> he wrote the whole thing out it was in his handwriting he said who he wanted to get what he basically disinherited a child and we went to court and fought over that thing and everybody eventually settled but i mean it was a sad story all around but didn't sign it okay so but that's the requirements it's got to have your yep. name obviously you're going to put in the details of who gets what um but you're going to sign it and date it Okay, now let's deal with, while we're here, this is good, I'm going to go through a list. Matt, know, you know where I'm going. Probably yeah. okay, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. In approximately 25 states, you don't even have to have it witnessed or notarized. I'm going to read those 25 states right now. So if I say your state, then you can just um, be fine with it today after the podcast you may give uh, send a copy to us, so to put in your file, give a copy to your mom, dad, spouse, whoever. Keep a, you know, make sure when it has a copy. We're going to come to some of these protocols after, but you're going to be done today. No more to do. But in these other 25 states, they can be a little different. But but I'll just say this: most of them want two witnesses. That's it. And you don't want to get it witnessed after you sign it. You're going to, those right. witnesses are going to watch you sign it. They don't need to watch you write it, but they need to watch you sign it. Now you could go to your state, just Google, uh, let's say Illinois. Illinois is not on the list, people. So just, I'm giving an example of Illinois is a problem child. When Il you say not on the list, you mean in Illinois, you're going to need witnesses. Correct. You can't just sign it yourself. Yep. What, what the, the 25 states we like are the ones where you just get to sign it. Don't even stress about the witnesses. Mm -hmm. But there are the ones like Illinois that are the problems. Yep. So one of these problems, I'm just telling you this in advance. If your name is, if your state name is not read off here in a moment, Illinois being an example of one I'm not going to say, uh, just Google it. Illinois holographic will. And go to the, it'll take you right to the state website or statute. And 99% of the time, they're going to say, two witnesses, you're fine. Some may say notary, some may not. So we're giving you a di we're giving a disclaimer here that you, it would not hurt before you sign it to just double check if you're in one of these states we're not going to read off if it's one or two witnesses and if you should have a notary or not. Okay, let's stay with this witness thing for one more minute. The witnesses cannot be someone that's getting something in your will. That's a general rule because yeah. they're they're they have a there conflict of interest. Yeah, there's state variations on that. Sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. But to be safe, and since we're making this a very general podcast, yeah, don't have them be the personal rep or someone getting something in here even. 
Um, and they got it, but they got to be 18. Yeah. Or older in most yeah. states. So you, and so you want to be careful. <laughs> Your friend who thinks they're getting something, when yeah. you say, come over and witness my will, and all of a sudden they realize they're not getting anything, they may not mow that part of the lawn. You know that part of the lawn <laughs> where you wish your neighbor would mow, and when they're really nice to you, they do. But then mm. sometimes they go straight down that line just to, yeah. just jerks. Okay. I don't get mowing lawns in Arizona. I just don't. Maybe they, uh, you know, <laughs> spread the rock. Pull the weeds in my rocks. You know. <laughs> That's true. Matt does not have lawn. Okay. Now, um, they have to be 18 and not receiving something in the will to be a witness. And they need to watch you sign it. Okay, now here's the list. Without any further ado, if I list off, now this is today, May 19th, 2021. The laws can change by tomorrow. So it never hurts to double check with a quick little Google search. But let me just tell you right now, you're gonna, everybody on the show, by the way, everybody today, you're going to write out your will. It's just if I don't name your state, you're going to wait to sign it until you're in front of two people. Okay, that's our guideline today. Yeah. All right, here's the states where you don't need to get your neighbor to come over. Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado. Now, if you've noticed, this is an alphabetical order, so... <laughs> if, if, so you can real quick figure out you're not on the list here in a moment okay so we go from colorado to hawaii to idaho kentucky louisiana maine michigan mississippi montana nebraska nevada new jersey north carolina North Dakota, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wyoming. Mm. If I named your state, you're going to have a completed valid will in the next 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Yep. You're welcome. I like that list. That kind of sounds like the NCAA college basketball tournament list right there. Got you know, North Carolina. <laughs> you know. um, and the number one that, draft pick goes to West Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I okay. – um, Okay, that's awesome. I think all those – there's a lot of big states there, a lot of states where we have clients, and many of you may be listening. Like Mark said, you're going to be done here in 30 minutes. So. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, now – Let's work our way through that list. We got last will and testament up at the top. Okay. You know, and here's what I like to do at the beginning. You tell me your style. You know, this is, there's some style okay. and art to this. Okay. You know, and there's some just legal requirements. The first thing, remember, you got to put your name. Okay. Now, I, I like, like throwing in there, you know, I'm Matt Sorensen of Sound Mind. I like that. Everybody write that. I'm going to write this. I, Mark Kohler, should I write? Who thinks I'm of sound mind, or sorry to say, of sound mind? Yeah. Okay. Of, I, Mark Kohler. Okay, write this out, everybody. Be, being I, of sound mind. Being of sound mind. So write your name. I, so and so, be, comma, being of sound mind. Okay. Do hereby, do hereby make this last will and testament. Do hereby. And we'll all prior last will and testaments. Okay. Do hereby. So I, name, comma, being of sound mind, do hereby make this last will and testament mm -hmm. and one more comma comma and revoke all prior wills and last testaments do i have to say and last testaments yeah. okay let's last do it and wills all right. prior wills yeah, right. and yeah. last testament a little, little style now, by saying all the hereby stuff and everything, it makes it sound very official. It's not necessary. That's really filler language. But, you know, us lawyers, we like to throw that stuff in and sound very. Well, know. there's a reason why, too. Some of you go, I hate legalese. I, and we're going to do this throughout. We're going to make sure you write it in certain legalese. The reason why is because when you say it in a casual manner, sometimes it can be misinterpreted. So legal yeah. language is there for a reason. It's not to bug you or to sound yeah. like we're smarter than someone. It's just because, you know, 
hey, this enough. is yeah. Mark. Yeah, you know, we just want to stay away from common mm -hmm. language if possible. Okay, so that's number one. I, Mark Kohler, okay. being a sound mind, da 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 da. Okay. All right. Can I keep going, or you, or you want to? Okay, I want to. Okay, I want to say, okay, say Article One. Okay. I want to have All sections. Right. Can we do Article One now? Yep, Article One. Okay, so right in the center right. of the page, a little smaller font yeah. than your last will and testament, put Article One. If you're watching on YouTube, here's mine so far, so you guys can all see it. Oh, that's a little out of focus, but you can see right there. Okay, on YouTube, okay. that's what mine looks like. Okay, Article One. Now, the first thing I think you want to identify is whether you're married and have a spouse and whether, you're ch have, whether you have children and let's name them all. Okay, so my family, can I just say my family is, or I should say, well, I, I would am- say, I would say I am married to blank. Okay, I am or single. Or not married, just say I am not married. <clears throat> okay, now here's, don't we gotta digress from, well, we're, I'm gonna digress right now. Some of you may be in the middle of a divorce. Does that mean you can't do a will? No, let's still do it. And you, we're going to, I would say at some point here, in fact, I might even suggest it in this article, say, if I die before the divorce is complete, here's what I'd like. But you can't disinherit your husband or wife until you're divorced. But some if people- If you're in the middle of a divorce, you're getting legal advice right now. You're not doing this. I'm sorry. I'm just yeah. like, that's- asking a little much to complete in this handwritten will here. Yeah, that's There's probably a true. Lot of legal considerations. Yeah, because we do it, we do it, we'll say, here's my will, and if once I'm divorced, here's what I want you to do. You could say something like that. So I'm just gonna throw that out. I would get legal advice, but I would say, I'm currently married, but getting a divorce, I want this will to yeah. go into effect upon the divorce proceedings being final. So yeah. if and you here's what Mark's something. getting at too, and this is an important legal point. If you don't have a prenup or a postnuptial agreement where you said, my assets are mine, my spouse's assets are theirs. If you're married, your spouse has a an entitlement to half of your estate in almost every state. So you can't say, I'm married and I want my spouse to get nothing. Nope. You can't say that. Yeah. So we need to identify up front whether you're married or not. And I think in the flow of this, it helps later on as we start to say who gets what. So if you say, I'm not married, easy, you know what to do later and we say who gets what. If you're like, I am married, then we you're normally gonna say, my spouse is gonna get all of my estate when I pass, or maybe they get half and my and if I have kids, they get the other half. There's things we'll work through in a minute here. But I just think we gotta you gotta you're gonna have a lane there. You married people versus not married. Yeah, yeah. And and I'll just say in summary, take a breath, everybody. Whew. If you're in the middle of a divorce. I'm sure you're talking to a lawyer. And if you say, can I write a will? They're gonna say, not while you're married. But while you're on this podcast, you can write a will and right here you'd say, I'm currently married, getting divorced. I want this will to be effective upon the finalization of my divorce. And then just keep writing, let's keep doing it. But you, this will, you don't have to worry about, because a lot of people get divorced and then they procrastinate again. They don't have anything written down. So you get to, this is your wish list. Any of you getting divorced, this is exciting because you're like, I'm going to write this will because when I'm divorced, this is what I would want to happen. So we're going to do it. Okay, but that's a side lane. Let's get back to track. Okay, right. okay. I am married to so-and-so or I am single. Yep. Just write that, people. Yeah. I am married to dot, dot, dot. I, I would just say I'm married or I am not married. <clears throat> okay. But, okay. I am married... I think you should say who. Let's say I'm married to someone. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm married to okay. blank. Yeah, but I, okay. if you're not married, I don't know. Single again. Right. I just like. Oh yeah. If you're yeah. married or not? It's okay. Not I'm, about, yeah. Okay. People I'm married to like, so. No, I, I'm not single. I'm in a relationship. Yeah. No, we're not talking about that. <laughs> yeah. Your boyfriend or girlfriend doesn't get anything. Yeah. You're married or you're not. Yeah. This is not a Facebook yeah. option. Yeah. You know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is a little different. Yeah. And when you say dot 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 relationship status. Yeah. In a relationship. <laughs> I, I'm not going to go into an, an ABBA song with dot, 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 even though I'd like to. Ooh, that's a good one. Dot, dot, could, could you actually? <laughs> yeah. From Mama Mia. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, yeah. She's reading. Yeah. The, Mom, oh, Corey, we're getting a shout out from Corey. That's very cultured of you to see Mama Mia, Corey. Okay. Yeah. All right. I am married to or I am okay. not married. Okay. And then I would say next. I have the following children. 
and then list your children and list their birth dates. Yeah, that'd be helpful. I like birthday. So I have children. Of course, those that have, you know, you'd say, I am not married. I have children. Or you'd say, I'm not married and I have no children, if that's the case. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now, some of you may, I'm going to digress here one more to some of you that are younger are going, I don't need a will. I have nothing. Well, you have something. You might have a car. You might have a little life insurance. You might have a 401k from your old job. You might have a piece of crap guitar. Yeah. You might, that's stuff. That's what yeah. a will's for, people. Okay. I am not married. I have children. Their names are as follows. I have children, mm -hmm. comma. Their names are as follows. Now, some of you are already realizing you're going to just scratch this down and you're going to probably rewrite it when we're done with a little better penmanship. So if you're scratching some things yeah. out and you're this sick of Matt like, and I... You know, this and, is draft you know, one. Junior high, you, you do your rough draft, you turn yeah. it in, and then you do your final draft. And yeah. then, you know, that's what you're getting graded on. So yeah. Their names are as follows. Okay. Now, if you adopted children, you would say, I have adopted this child. Because mm -hmm. you want to be clear if you have. Yeah. And if you if there's a kid in the mix, like say you've, you're married and you've got stepchildren, you want to say, I have the following children. And maybe be clear here and say, the following are not my children and are not included in this will. So yes, you, you, if that's the case, yeah. If that's so the case. your blood children or children you have adopted are going to presume to be heirs that you're going to have to specifically write out. Stepchildren, not, but it is good to be clear in case, like Mark said, at that unveiling, your family's opening up the letter and yeah. the stepkids are there and they're like, what do I get? And you got them nothing. You know, you want you just say that. I yeah. mean, don't, don't leave it up. Don't leave that question out there. Yeah, and because what's going to happen later in an article here in a minute, we're going to say, I leave my children the following, as defined in Article 1. So right mm -hmm. now, this allows us to use the word children in a blanket statement. By the way, this is a whole semester in law school, and we're trying to do this in a podcast. This is still very yeah. ambitious. Okay, so I have children. Right. Their names are as follows. I've adopted okay. the following children. And then if you have stepchildren or anything weird, some kid that appears to be sleeping on your couch every night, say, these following people are not my children, yeah. even though they think they are. And they eat my house out of home, at my, what do they, eat food out of house and home, whatever they say. Eat me out of house and home. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're not my kids. List yeah. it. It's better you list them than not. Like Matt said at the beginning, I'm All not right. kidding. Yeah. Okay. All the right. pool, okay. the we pool got, boy we got is got not it. mine. Okay. Okay. Can I, okay. Can I hit the next area? Yeah. yeah. Everybody's asking, okay. what did Arnold Schwarzenegger put in his will? Mm. That's what everybody's asking. Right? Deep. Yeah. He didn't die, did he? No, but. Okay. I was like, oh, dang. Did I but let's say he did his okay. will when he was with yeah. Maria. Mm -hmm. And then we had the. Illegitimate child of the oh, housekeeper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Deep. Uh, okay. That's a probate mm -hmm. waiting to happen. Okay. Yeah. Article two. All right. Okay. Article two. I designate the following person as my designate. executor. Okay. For, go slow. I designate. Go slow. I, I designate, designate the, following the following person as my executor. As my executor. Or personal Under, representative. Or personal representative. Or personal representative. I just do period. No, colon. Now, colon, okay. I now, designate little, the uh, following person. Okay, now just talk about who this little, is. Go ahead. Yeah, little quick tip for just, you know, some style points on your holographic will. If you're listing a female, sometimes they're referred to as an executrix, hmm. not an executor. I like so, that. Fine. Just, Very little, you know, you don't have to go with that, you know, but... <laughs> Um, okay. okay, who do you think that should be? That, and I, that you got to think right now, right? You knew who your spouse was. <laughs> if you had one, you knew who your kids were. Now you got to think, well, crap, who am I putting in charge? Okay, now let's who talk about I what this person do? does. Yeah. Okay. I'll give a couple ideas. The executor or personal representative. In fact, it's almost easier to say it this way. There's several people involved. The personal representative or executor. From now on, we're just going to call him executor. The executor's job is to hand out all your assets, handle the funeral, prep the eulogy, pay for the funeral expenses, go close your bank account, 
transfer the car. You know, some of you that are younger are saying, well, I got a couple grand in crypto right now, or okay, they got to deal with that. So you got to, who's this executor? Um, now, you may have a guardian for your children. That's different. Yeah, you may have someone that. that, yeah, that it's your healthcare power of attorney. That's different. You might have a trustee. That's different. Now, in my article today that came out on my blog was about Prince. For any of you 80s fans, Purple Rain, Prince, singer, pop singer of the 80s, died without a will. And the court appointed a big bank and trust company to be the executor. Because if you don't do a will and you don't appoint your executor, the court's going to appoint someone. And it's usually not going to be family because that just is a recipe for a fight. And it is executors, let me give you a tip, can be very expensive. Mm -hmm. I am sure the bank handling Prince's estate has made millions over the last five years of dealing with all the crap in Minnesota with his probate because he had no will. So you want to name someone, but it can be family. Matt, what do you like to look for in an executor? Well, if you're married, you probably would list your surviving spouse as an executor. It's possible. You don't have to, but that's very common Yeah. if, if you're married. Okay. A lot of times they know what where all your stuff is anyways, and they're going to get it anyways. You know, we're, again, we're going to get to who gets what here in a moment. Um, I like siblings, actually, sometimes, too, here. Um, one thing I'll say is don't list parents. Yeah. You know, like people older than you. You know, I just that that one just they could predecease you. Plus, they get old. They don't want to deal with it. I, mm -hmm. I don't like listing the parents. Maybe you've got a friend or a business partner too, and it's someone you invest with that would know your finances and the people in your life that you've obviously trusted with to go in business with them. That could be a good person too. I'd like to choose someone that's local. I think that mm -hmm. helps because it's someone that needs to be around during the yeah. funeral and going through the house. They're the, they're, they're the police chief of going through the house and keeping everybody at bay. And some people say, make your worst enemy your executor. <laughs> it is not a fun job. It is not a fun job. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of liability. If they were to steal some of your assets, they have what is called a fiduciary duty to carry out your will and to make good decisions. If they are fraudulent, or reckless or negligent yeah. in some states, they can, you, the beneficiaries might sue them. They'd say, yeah. you squandered our money, you idiot. And you know, you were supposed to be an executor and you just moved into the house and started living there. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. So you want to choose someone you trust. Yeah. Okay, and else? that executor is going to have to go to court. This is one of the things of a will that's different than a trust is a will has to go to probate. So your personal representative or executor here, again, we're calling them executor in general, is going to have to take this will, the original. Mm -hmm. Copies are tricky. We, we yeah. want to have copies just as a backup, but the original needs to go to probate court. Yeah. And they're going to have to take that and say, hey, probate court, this person died. Here's their will. Here's their death certificate. There's notices that have to go out for spouses and kids and everybody that have to go in the process. Mm -hmm. And then the court, as long as there's no issues, is going to say, okay, executor, here's an order. You're the executor on this estate. Take this piece of paper from the court that's an order. And sometimes there's other names for things you'll get. And that's how the executor gets to go around and move all the assets around at the various places, you know, yeah. like, sell the house, mm -hmm. do all that stuff. Yeah, because if you go to sell the house as the executor, the title company is going to go, who the hell are you? Well, I'm the executor. Yeah. I, I got a care. will here. It says I'm listed. Yeah. yeah, I don't care until a court, you know, stamps Rub that and puts, yep. signs an order saying you are, you ain't. Okay, now let's move along. So what you want to do, I designated the following person as my executor, comma, or personal representative, colon. Now, write that name there right now. Now, some mm -hmm. of you may say, well, I need to think about it. Nope, just write yep. it down. Write we the person you're thinking now. You can come and do a new one next month if you think of someone else. That's right. We get sick and tired of people that are like, well, I need to think about this. Nope. You can always change it later. So write down this name, okay? Now it could be your spouse or anybody, young or old, friend. Some people appoint their lawyer or accountant. We're very often named. Okay, then you have another sentence. If so-and-so, the person you just, you're gonna start a new sentence. If so-and-so cannot serve or is unwilling to serve, 
I appoint dot, dot, dot to be backup. You could put the replacement executor, the, you know, but to be like backup. Backup, yeah. backup. Yeah. okay. Now, in the trusts and wills we do for clients, we'll do another sentence and say, if so-and-so can't do it, there's a third. We want three people. We want number one, number two, and backup number three. One other nuance, you can have a team of executors. You can say, I appoint my brother and my sister as co-executors. But again, get legal consult right. at that point. Okay, yeah. so you're going to point. Right. Okay, Article 3. Turn to my page over. Okay. Article now, 3, center it. For those of you that had kids mm. that are under the age of 18, you need to designate a guardian for your kids. All right? Now, if your kids have another parent in their life, whether you're married or not, that other parent, when you pass, is going to be the guardian. Okay. So, you know, you're not going to say, well, if I die and, and I've got an ex or I've got a spouse, I want this person to be guardian. No, the other parent is going to become guardian. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, but if you're the, now a lot of people, particularly if you're married, um, are going to say, if I'm, you know, pass away and my spouse passes away, maybe you go together in a car accident or something, you know, and that unfortunately happens. I want someone to be the guardian of my children. Okay. My, and again, this is for minors under the age of 18. Okay. Now, as you can see, people, this is why a legal consult and doing a will or trust plan with all the pieces and parts will tell you we have a special every year that's going on right now. We'll tell you a little later what. You may say, this is too much. I just want to talk through it in my situation and have you guys yeah. do it. Cool. Just hear us out. This is a good podcast, too, so you know these terms. But um, I would... Um, Realize, I would recognize that if it gets a little complicated here, don't stress out. We can do it for you, but keep learning here. Now, this is where you could write, here's some example verbiage. Um, if you have no children, Article 3 is going to be the next article. So we're going to yep. come to that in the middle. But if you have children, you're going to say, um, if, my, if I pass away, I appoint my spouse as the guardian of my children. If you're not married, you'd say the same thing because your ex, you can't take away what's called parental rights. Your ex-husband or ex-wife has the right as the biological parent to be the parent unless those have been terminated by the court. And some of you may be in that situation. Well, my ex was so crazy on drugs and rehab, the court took away their parental rights. Well, you could mm -hmm. say that because my spouse had his parental rights taken away by the court in XYZ County, comma, I hereby appoint so-and-so to be the guardian of my children. Okay. You're going to say that. I hereby appoint, I'm going to write it down right now. I hereby appoint the following person. I hereby appoint the following person to be the guardian of my children under age 18. Per, yeah, be, there you go. The Guardian. Okay, now, Matt, what do you want to say about yeah. parents on this one? I know you and I share the same feeling on this. Yeah, don't list your parents. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> Let them stay grandma and grandpa, you know. Yes, and please. they might be a more involved grandma and grandpa if you pass away. Um, but I like siblings mm. here. Keep it in the family. Um, your siblings might have kids the same age. And think of yourself when you were a kid. You know, think of if your parents passed away, who would, where would it have been natural for you to go? You know, some people might think, ah, oh, my friend, you know, but like, no, really, like what would have been the best for you? And I think for many people, it would have been maybe going to an aunt and uncle. You got some cousins, you're still within the family. And that's, oh that's likely what I would have, where I would go. Okay. Okay, Matt. Well, I'm going to take a different approach or view point, if that's okay. okay. I'm sure this that's never happens. <laughs> this is not a first. <laughs> it's not the first time. Okay. Um, I, and and I we're trying to keep this topic light, but there are going to be times where there's going to be some difficult stories. Talking about people's death is is it, it's it's tough. Everybody has different beliefs and experiences. I had an uncle die this last Sunday. Loved the guy. He was the first one yeah. that took me on a, a, a a sleigh with horses behind it. He's the uncle up in Newdale, Idaho with the potato yeah. farms, thousands of acres. 
um, really close to, but he had a great life. He was older. And I think when you have someone that's older and ha has had a, all those life experiences, you're like, Hey, this is a, it's a, it's almost like a family reunion. But when you have those sudden deaths, unexpected, uh, suicide, like you referenced earlier, or someone in a car accident, or you never got to say goodbyes and accidents. Those are really, yeah. really difficult. Um, I've got to be careful because this is another client of ours that um, could very well be listening to the podcast. I'm trying to get her to on a regular basis, but she's in her early 20s. I'm going to even say 21, 22. And I'll, I'll just say both of her parents died and no wills, went into probate. And you would have thought, well, the oldest daughter, there's three younger siblings. The next youngest was in high school and she was just graduated from high school. So this is a year or two ago and she was headed off to college. And the debate was, should she raise the kids? And that would have been tragic. And luckily the sister of the mother stepped up and said, we really want to raise these three younger kids. Let's let the oldest daughter go off to college and kind of have a life. And so I know there's instances where you may have an older child that is in their late twenties or early thirties. They may have one child or two of their own, and you might have a, a younger kid that's coming along and living with a sibling could be a good fit. But I think you've got to be careful and look at, is really that the right time and age for a sibling to raise younger siblings? And it could be the worst thing in the world. So yeah. it is, it's so tricky, but anyway, so there was my take on that. I think okay. Um, I've got one other one. My wife and okay. I, we had, our, none of our siblings were really a good choice for us. <laughs> um, and and that's so, okay. Sometimes yeah. it's just, it's not, you know, and some of those geographic things and, you know, uh, I mean, who knows? We don't get yeah, to right? <laughs> and so one thing in this will that we, is in this same, we're going to talk about this in an article to come up is um, we chose a guardian that was a God couple. And see, that's a lot of a big issue too. Are you going to choose a couple? What happens if they get divorced? Are you going to choose a person, yeah. young or old? What's their life experience? And so a lot of people later in the will here, we're going to say in this section, who's going to raise my kids if it's not my surviving spouse? Are we going to keep our kids in the same school, in the same neighborhood, and try to create a, a, at least as much normalcy and as right. we can? And so we chose a couple and we said, we want you to move into our house. They were a younger couple and they were friends of both sides of our family. Now, my mom was ticked when she found this out. I can't believe you're not gonna have our side of the family raise the kids. I'm like, oh my gosh. My mom was just <laughs> ready for a fight. But and that's what happens if you don't have a will. So- Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, and so, she would have been having that fight with your other side of the family. Yep. You know, or this person who got thrown in the mix who was, you know, who may have volunteered because they thought maybe you would have wanted that. But if you have it in writing, everyone's just following your wishes. Yep. And that makes it easy. And, and who better would know than you? So. Yeah. Okay, I like that. That's okay. some good tips. Yeah. Okay, right. so on Article 3, you're going to do the same sentence you did in Article 2, that if this person is unable or unwilling to serve, so-and-so should be the backup. Yep. So make sure you add that sentence. Okay. okay. So you got a backup guardian. Okay. Yep. Okay, All Article right. 4. Now okay. it gets a little in. We're interested. Ooh. So, so yeah. Article 1, I, who I am, okay. family, and who's going to raise my kids? Who's my executor? What do you like? Article okay, four. I like to outline specific assets first, okay? Okay. Sometimes it's like, well, I own a boat with my brother, and so when I die, my brother's getting the boat, you know? Okay. Or I've got that partner in a business that's a specific asset. When I pass away, that partner in that business gets that specific asset. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's easiest to knock out a few things that are very specific up front, and then we're going to say, and everything else gets split up in equal parts and sold to these people. But there's these few things that are things like that are specific that maybe I co-own with someone or has certain sentimental value to one person over another. Maybe list any specific assets you have first here. And so, so I would say. Specific so what, bequests. Can yeah. Call it that? Specific bequests. That's what okay. we call like in time. But I would say you, what you could say here is I hereby. Okay. Um, 
leave the following assets. I was going to say bequeath if I yeah. could. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, know. I mean, when can I ever say that word if not yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. I hereby bequeath the mm. following specific assets to the following individuals. Okay, I hereby and then, bequeath. And you go here. You're gonna have a. You're gonna say what the asset is and who gets it. And this now. is a great bullet point list. In fact, I would yeah. even do bullet points. You want to go one, two, three, four, because. Yeah. For, because it's going to say Article 3 or 4, depending on if you had children or for Article 3. Article 4, number 1. Number 2. Yep. Number 3. So use numbers or A, B, C, D. Okay. And let me give you an example on how to do this. So then let's okay. say, let's say, you know, the 2012, you know, whatever boat. I don't even know a cool boat name. I couldn't even. Bay. Supra? Are those cool? What's no. a cool boat? What's a cool boat, Corey? A bay? What do they call them? Bay? Bayliner? Those are Bayliner. Cool. Well, you can spend a lot on a Bayliner. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. How so about, let's say. The, no, I'm going to leave the yacht. The, the Mastercraft? The, oh, the no, yacht. Okay. The yacht. But you got to identify it. <laughs> unless everybody knows what you have the, one uh, yacht. You know? I mean. The, the million dollar yacht. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Let's make this easy. Okay. Let's say it's the. The 1972 Corvette that's your prized possession okay, that's in right. your garage. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Since Mark and I know nothing about boats, clearly. Obviously. All right. <laughs> okay. The 1972 Corvette. Um, you know, so you say that on one line, and then next to it, you'd you'd say who gets it. Okay. And and I would list their name, and their city and state. Sometimes it's confusing who is who. And, you know, if you have a junior or senior in your family, you know, where it's somebody be confused who this person is, but I like in identifying them a little more than just their name um, here in this section, because okay. it's not your kids. It's not your parents that you're going to immediately, everybody's going to know, oh, that's what you intended. Yeah. You know, if you're like Ron Johnson, I don't know. Is that yeah. Senator Ron Johnson? Is that, yeah. was that, did he meant to write Ron Swanson? Who knows? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me just say, Matt, you had me at meat tornado. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just say that. Okay. Now, <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to read this. Everybody take a breath. I know we're joking around a little bit here, but Article 4, specific bequests at the centered, right below Article 4, I hereby bequeath the following assets to the following individuals. Then you're going to go A, B, C, D. Now, there's a variety of things to deal with. It could be A, I leave the grand piano to so-and-so. I leave my 30 6 shotgun from Grandpa Jones to so-and-so kid. I leave uh, my wedding ring to so-and-so. And these are things that could be outside the bounds of a spouse, and you're not going to have a problem. This is personal yeah. property. If it's of extreme value, a spouse that got disinherited that item could make a claim in the probate proceeding, but... 98.9% of the time, you're not going to have a problem with these specific assets. Now, if I could say, if that asset you're giving has a debt that goes with it, say it. Say, I'm going to leave the boat or I'm yeah. going to leave the cabin to so-and-so and they have to take over the mortgage. If they don't want to take over the mortgage, they don't get the asset. The asset's going to go into the pool and sold with everybody else. Or they can keep the cabin and they can sell it if they want and keep the proceeds. Write as much as you want. Say it just like that. They John yeah. gets the cabin. He's got to take the mortgage. If he sells it within a year, he's got to give the money back to the other people and share it with so-and-so or blah, blah, blah. Just write down his, write a book. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And I think being like, in in this type of structure when you're writing out just being as clear and direct as possible mm -hmm. is is the best don't try and do an exception to the exception to the exception you know and be like, yeah. well but if this but if not that then this but if that person doesn't do this then this, then you're gonna like you know, yeah it's gonna get screwed up yeah okay. um i think in this section too this is a good time to deal with the guardian because mm -hmm. whoever you're making the guardian of your children may not be a person that's getting any inheritance so you want to carve out a little something for them. And that's what we do. This is where a full-on estate plan, we probably should digress to that here in a moment before our next article. But but in this yeah. at this level, say, out of my life insurance, out of my estate 
of my equity in my home or choose somewhere there's money, say my guardian gets 50 grand of that because I, they need that money to take care of the yeah. kids. Uh, so carve out some money for them and yeah. Yeah. And then like a trust, the trust can like pay it yearly or monthly and keep it over time in the will. It's going to be a one and done. Typically you're going to say, you know, yeah. Now you could try and create a trust within a will that has to get probated, pain in the butt. So I think what you just said, 50 grand, pick the dollar amount that you think would be helpful for that guardian to receive. And and maybe it's the family that doesn't need the money as much, but it's still a good token, I think, to show them, thank you for taking on this responsibility and, you know, for my most important thing I'm leaving behind my kids, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Now, Article Five. I'm right. gonna, I'm gonna, I think there's gonna be other articles here where we talk about funeral and burial instructions and maybe a few other things. But do we want to do the main piece right here, or save it yeah. for the climax I, at the end? Just, I think it's where you do it. Yeah. Okay. Article Five. Okay. Dis distribution of assets. Yeah. I would, I would say this. All right. Article Five here. Now, people got to get paid, right? Yep. The mortician, <laughs> the tax man, okay? Uh, the <laughs> tax man, <laughs> tax man. What movie is that from? Yeah. I, I don't know. The tax man. She's in the bakery and she's yelling at him. Stranger than fiction. Oh. Stranger than fiction. Sense. Yeah. That tax man. Sense. Okay. I don't okay. remember that song. Okay. okay. Um, all right. So we're going to say um, the... Uh, all okay, so Article 5. Assets. Okay, yeah, so this is Article 5. Article yeah. 5, payment of expenses. This is the subtitle, yeah. payment of expenses. Yeah. Now you're going to write all, all of them. Go ahead. You want to do that? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Are we going to do it like acapella duet there? Yeah. All... <laughs> oh, you say it. Okay, all right. So we're going to say all of my assets, not specifically identified above, okay, shall so that's be sold. Low. Everybody write okay. that down. All of my all assets, of my ass not specifically identified above comma shall be yeah comma shall be sold and the proceeds shall be used to first pay debts expenses taxes and costs of my estate love it period I don't think we should try and say that again. If you if you need okay. to just hit rewind on your podcast, the little okay. 10, 10 second button. Do they go back yeah. ten seconds or thirty seconds? Ten seconds, uh, thirty seconds. Yep. Okay, that was perfectly stated, my co-host. Okay. All right. So thank you. Pay all my expenses. Sometimes it'll say, "I direct my executor to sell all of my assets." Yeah. Pay all my expenses and collect yeah. all of my wealth into one yeah. bucket there's different ways to say it and folks yeah. if we if we say it a way you don't like and you look at other wills online and go those guys are stupid i i could say that better then say it yeah. better we're riffing yeah matt's a guitarist yeah. this is called riffing yeah we're just riffing you know <laughs> so <laughs> okay that's article five all right payment Pay of debts all right article six okay the good one the one you want to go to if you're the, on the if you're you know maybe a potential <laughs> beneficiary here, you want to go right to Article Six. Okay, yep. Yep. this is who gets what distribution of assets. That's the subtitle. So Article Six, then you'd center right below it, distribution of assets. Okay, can I say this hey. one? Do I get a shot yeah, at yeah. this one? Okay, yep. all right. I direct my executor. To distribute the residue of my estate to the following individuals in the following percentages. Okay. And then, and then I like A, B, C, D. One, two, three, four. Because we, we already said the executor is going to sell everything else in five and pay expenses and then the residue, as you said, mm -hmm. <laughs> the residue, remaining, like the remaining remainder yeah. of my estate. 
Yeah, however you like it. I mean, yeah. residue works, you know. Tomato, tomato. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Now, now this is again probably another bullet point here, and where we want to put names and percentages next to those. Now, again, if it's a person you're dropping in here that pe someone might be like, who the hell is this? Or it's someone that's a senior or junior. Let's be specific on who they are. You know, if it's your if it's your mistress over there that no one knows who the hell she is and you're dropping this bomb in your in your will when you die, um, let's you're going to have to identify who that person is. You know, so okay. now. This this is a great tangent time. You I'm going like to take a joke, huh? <laughs> no, I loved it. I loved it. I got. I want to tell my golf course story. Yeah, dude. Okay. No, no, no. I love it. I love it. Okay. I mean, I don't want the mistress dropped on anyone or Mister. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just I'm just trying to yeah. keep it light. You know. Yeah, just, yeah. You're yeah. keeping it light. Okay. Let me throw this out now. This I, let's digress here for a moment. Every year, we do. This will be the 11th year. We've done our annual estate planning special for one month out of the year we provide about a 20% discount on our estate plans. We try to create, we bring in staff from other parts of the firm to try to create an efficient system for all those procrastinators out there to get their estate plan done, just to freaking mm -hmm. knock it out. We're, we're systemized. It's like a, it's a time to like come in and get her done. It's that time of the mm -hmm. year, the farmer's market, you can go get fresh fruit. Let's just do it, get in there, get out. So this year, the price is $1,200, typically $1,500 for any individual, married or single, in any state to get their will, trust, powers of attorney, living will, power of attorney for health care, funeral and burial instructions, a consult with an attorney for at least an hour or whatever you need. Typically, try to keep it within an hour to an hour and a half to discuss it, review it, approve it, and it goes out to you in a binder with all sorts of bells and whistles. If you'd like to get that done and say, but no, we'd still recommend do your written will right now. And then if you're like, right. I want to get it done right, start the process. You can go to any of our websites. It's on all of our websites, a little link for the special this year. Would you add anything to that, man? Yeah. And remember, there's other documents in here about, you know, if I'm in a vegetative state, do I want the plug pulled? Okay. You're going to need to do that in a different type of document than you can in this holographic will. Um, the trust is avoids probate. There's all these other things that go into estate planning that make it better, but we're just trying to get you the bare bones here and to get something in place now that you don't have to pay one dollar for. Okay, just mm -hmm. you know, we that's what our goal is here. But we know many of you are thinking, man, I really should, I mean, knock out 1200 bucks, it's done. I want to amend it easy, just you know, you want to cut someone out. One page amendment. You don't need to redo the whole thing. Just amend it in one page. Okay. Right. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because I'm about to add a sentence to Article 6. Article 5 for some of you without children. But this applies to everybody. Article 6 can get a little hairy. And I was just like, what do we normally say in our trust and will? And so I went to go pull it up on my desktop. And we, I, we have it. Our estate plan is 88 pages long because we try to think of everything. Everything. Pets, guns, real estate, businesses, second marriages, his kids, our kids, their kids, grandkids. I mean, so we've got all sorts of bells and whistles in this, and it's all one price. Some people go, well, I paid four grand for mine. Yours guys must suck. It's got to be a crappy document. Because someone quoted me three grand. <laughs> no, we believe an estate plan should be affordable. I've done the same estate plan for $10 million clients. Same plan. I don't care. Mm -hmm. And so you are getting a document we have crafted over 20 years. Every sentence in here has got mine mm -hmm. and Matt's blood on it, going through it and trying to like make it perfect. All right, so here's my next sentence. So you've said, okay. I'm gonna distribute my assets to the following individuals in the following percentages. Now here's where it gets hairy. Each share, write this down people. This is your next sentence. Each share set aside for a person above who is deceased, comma, shall be distributed in the following manner. Because what happens if someone mm -hmm. has predeceased you that's on that list? Option one, if they have living descendants 
they shall receive it per stirpes. Let me, I'll explain what that means in a minute. Who has then living descendants shall be distributed to those descendants per stirpes. Now, if Let, that's P-E-R, stirpes is spelled S-T-I-R-P-E-S. It's not herpes, it's stirpes. Okay. okay. Do you want to explain what that means, Matt? Yeah. So let's give an example. Let's okay. say you had three kids. Okay? okay. You were, you didn't have a spouse at the time. Let's just keep it easy. You had three kids. And let's say by the time you pass away, you, one of your kids had predeceased you, you and you listed three of them here. So you, but you had two left. Okay. okay. Well, option one here is going to say, if you're going to follow option one, that's going to say, well, my kid that has already passed away, I want it to go to my kid's heirs. All right. And that, that if that kid had a surviving spouse, their surviving spouse would get it. If that kid had children, their children would get it. I'm going to disagree on one point. Okay, let's stick with your okay. example. You had a Tom and Mary had three kids. One mm -hmm. of their kids predeceased them, and they pull out this handy dandy wheel that they just did today on the podcast. Yep. If that child, what we're trying to define here is. Where does that child of theirs money go? So if they were to get a third of the estate, so let's say there was a million dollars, and if you had life insurance, a 401k, an IRA, and a house, you could easily have a million dollars. So each one of your kids would get 300,000. The sentence I just said, said that my kid's descendants, if they've deceased me, then has living descendants, shall get their share, which would be the third, per stirpes. So if my kid had two kids, then they would get it per stirpes 50-50 of the third. Their spouse doesn't get it. Yeah. It's their kids get it. So you're trying to keep it in the bloodlines because you may hate your kid's spouse. So you're saying, I'm going to give my, if any of my kids dies before me, their share is divided per stirpes, which means equally among their kids' bloodlines or adopted your grandkids yes grandkids yep. their spouse wouldn't get it did we say the same thing when you said spouse i kind of wanted to go down no, you're path. right you're right you corrected me that's that's correct that's per stirpes okay that, that's right so this this if you just say now you know maybe you love the spouse and you want and that spouse would need to take care of them and you you could say that the their spouse would get it but mm -hmm. per stirpes it does follow bloodline essentially. Mm -hmm. And so it would go like Mark said to your grandkids in that example of your child that had predeceased you. Okay. Here's option so B. Spouse, got nothing. Yep. Now here's option B. If a deceased child has no living descendants, the share allocated to them shall go to their spouse if married. That's option B. So you say, hey, my kid's married, but no kids, no grandkids, but I want that spouse to get their share. So you'd say that. Okay. B, if they have no living descendants, if married, their spouse shall get their share. Okay. Option C, as in Charlie. If a deceased beneficiary above has no living descendants and is not married, their share shall be split with the other living beneficiaries. So they lose it. It's dead at that right. point. So, so your two your two surviving kids get it 50-50 now. Yep. It's not in one third yep. anymore. It's just going 50-50 to their okay. two kids. Now, if you go back to the spouse one, if this is that is from the language here, it's like if you were if you listed one of your kids, let's say, and they've died. They're not married, are they, technically, to the, the surviving spouse. So oh. if, they were some, if they were married at the time of their death and had a surviving spouse, that spouse could then inherit. Again, if this is what you wanted. And, maybe, and some people are like, yeah. you know what? Skip that piece. I want it to go to my grandkids. But if my kid's gone, I don't want it to go to their surviving spouse. I'd rather go to my other kids. Yeah. You know, So you can deviate here however you want. But this middle piece, I just think, if we want it to go to to – surviving spouse of a kid that died before you did say it but if not say that yeah, yeah. say that and they're technically not 
you know, they're dead. They're not married. Yeah. I don't know. Are you married? So when you're dead, I don't know. No, depends, no, that's a great point. So it's funny. I correct. I know spiritually you might, but from a legal standpoint, I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> yeah. And I love it. I corrected you on per stirpes. You corrected me on B because I said, some of you may have caught that. Hold it. Uh, a kid that's dead, their spouse. No, they're dead. Yeah. They're surviving spouse. Yeah. You're okay. widowed or, you know, yeah. so, and I think that's why we have two Co, you know, that's why we have co-hosts for this show. Yeah. Now, okay. No. <laughs> some of you here, here's something we should have started with, but I didn't want to interrupt Matt's example at the beginning. I'm going to call out Christy Parker at our firm. She's one of our attorneys. She's adorable. She's got a fun, fun personality. So I'm going to joke out. I'm going to joke about her and she, she'd appreciate it. Um, I'm going to say, use Christy as an example. Christy is not married and has no children um, that she knows about. I mean, I could say that about some guys, you know. <laughs> But, yeah, for women, I was like, yeah, I think yeah. you know. <laughs> I, think, I think she'd know. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> some of you guys out there that are single, I can say, you don't have any children that you know of, you know. But Christy, <laughs> I think she'd know. Okay, so Christy has no children and is not married. So I would have done Matt's example from the beginning. Don't All of you out there that are single, you would start this, par this, out, this sentence by going, if any of the beneficiaries above. Because see, Christy's going to say, I give the residue of my estate to the following beneficiaries. They're not going to be children. Could be your nieces. Yeah. Could be your parents, a brother or sister. So you're going to start this section out, Article 6, by saying, I leave the residue of my estate to the following individuals in the following percentages. Those don't have to be kids. And then you would say the next sentence, if any of the above beneficiaries are deceased, their share shall, what? You decide. Go to their living yeah. descendants, go to their surviving spouse, Get go nowhere, go to charity, go back to the pool and split with the other living beneficiaries. Just say it, be as clear as you can. Yeah, go. and sometimes what the word is is per capita versus instead of per stirpes, when you want it to, if that person's not living and is predeceased, you would say that it, the, the, the estate would be distributed per capita. Yeah. So meaning they get back into the pool. The three and and you know one of them's dead and two are left. The two get 50-50. It goes yeah. it goes right back and goes per capita to who's left. Yeah. And those descendants, you can say those descendants share with my other children per capita. So the two kids of the deceased ch child would come back up and we'd have four. You know, if, if if that's what you say, say, I want my deceased child grandkids to get in the mix and go per capita, then the, the two kids, yeah. the grandkids would now share with the two aunt and uncle if, per se. But but that would be complicated. That it one would. right there, that's a yep. per stirpes and a per capita thing. So you, if you're writing this out, you got to be careful on that because mm -hmm. per mm -hmm. capita, a lot of times mean I'm doing the opposite of per stirpes. Yep. Yep. So be careful. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Um, all right, Article 7 or 6, as the case may be, mm -hmm. I kind of like to say funeral and burial instructions here. That yeah. would be my subtitle. So I yep. go Article 7 or 6, funeral and burial instructions. Yeah. Now, this can be actually a very emotional and kind of, I'll be so bold as to say, fun <laughs> piece. <laughs> Because I once had a client that came in and said, uh, and by every, everybody out there, you might be thinking about life insurance and IRAs and 401ks. We're going to come to that in a minute. Um, but I like this section because I once had a client that said, Mark, I want you to be my executor. I want you to sell everything, pay off my debts, and I want you to buy a ticket to a cruise for the following, I think it was about 10 people. And he said, these 10 people, uh, I want you to take them on a cruise and I want you to have me cremated and I want you to read the following statement as you drop my ashes off the back of the boat. And I mean, he was very specific. It was between Cozumel and uh, uh, Cayman Islands on a Royal Caribbean cruise. I want you to drop my ashes off the back, kind of like the woman in Titanic. Just doop, drop the diamond off the back. Okay. <laughs> I worked, in, I worked in Titanic here. I think I deserve some <laughs> okay. bonus points here. Okay. Yeah. So appropriate okay. for people dying, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you drop, drop, <laughs> drop the ashes off the back of the boat. And then he had a really nice statement. He, he had written it all out. It said, hey, everybody, I had a great life. 
whether I died by accident or natural causes or this or that, I just, I just want all of you to know, you're the people that affected me in my life. I love you. Don't be sad for me. Have a great cruise. Celebrate my life. I just got chills saying that. It was a really neat statement. Um, and uh, so this is the place you say, this is what, how I want my funeral done. This is how where I want to be buried, how I want to be buried. Here's any yeah. final statements. Tell everybody and say, you little jerk, I hated you, or I loved this person or hated this person. Yeah, you say whatever you want. They can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy reading say, hey, don't shoot the messenger. I mean, yep. he wanted you here for me to say, you suck. suck. <laughs> and you get nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, um, all right, well, I think don't get hang up hung up on this, okay? Yeah. Um, this is one thing people are like, well, I don't have a plot, you know. Mm. I don't know where I want to be buried. I don't know if I haven't thought about if I really want to be cremated or, you know, just say at least what you know now. And if you don't know, you don't need to say anything. Yeah. Your executor's just gonna figure it out. Now, if you have an inkling of where you're leaning, like I want this type of church service, I want this person to speak. I want to be buried or cremated. Like just what you've thought through or can put to paper right now, just write that down. You know, I would like to be cremated, period. I would like to be buried, period. Where you your ashes get put, where you get buried, you may know that and be okay with that. But um, if you don't, don't get hung up because you want to have it all figured out because then you don't finish this thing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. You can agree. add that in later. Okay. Now I want to say this, and I now I've got a number of little assets that we, I want to talk about here in a minute. I want to talk about pets, guns. Uh, as, where do you put this thing? I want to talk about your uh, digital media, um, your assets in your house. But just for a moment, let's wrap it up right now. This is what I'd say next. Then we're going to talk about okay. some unique provisions you might be able to pop in there. Are you okay with that, Matt? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's, Here's yeah. what I'd say. Quickly, yeah. <laughs> At the end, I would say this. I declare that at the time of my S at uh, at the time I signed this will, comma, I okay, I declare at the time of signing this will, comma, Mark Kohler was of sound mind and memory and under no undue duress or constraint, period. And this is really required in a lot of states, date and sign it. So for all of those 25 states we listed off before, you're done. Date, mm -hmm. sign it, done. If you're not in one of those states, I think you're gonna need two witnesses while you sign it Look it up in your state, but I, you're done. Yeah, just get your Herbie Hancock on that, and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> so you were supposed to set it up, going get your John Hancock on there, and I go. I thought it was Herbie Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, t Tommy Boy, good call, man. Good call. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that's yeah. right. We, we hit Tommy's dad with the will reading. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Man, yeah, that was was that, that Farrah Fawcett and uh, yeah, Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe, ooh, yeah, that was I good. Love yeah, yeah, that, that was Rob good. Lowe. Uh, uh, okay, all right, now you're done. Except, okay? yeah, okay. Except there's some assets you need to know. Now, I'm just, I'm serious. You can scan it or print, you know, do copies old school, whatever. You know, get it to us if we're your attorney. Um, we'll at least throw it in your file. Get it to your loved one, but make sure this isn't a place where someone knows. Who Probably mm -hmm. who you picked as the executor, let them know. This is in the, my desk in my office at my home. You know, this is, you know, you tell them where it is and where it's located. And maybe it's in a safe or a safety deposit box. You're going to have to let them know and give them instructions on how they're going to get to it if you're doing that. But don't make this thing be some like goose egg, you know, or Easter egg hunt for your family. They're like, did he have a will or not? You know? Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> love it. I usually am the one that use uh, foot in my mouth. I like, you don't want it to be a goose egg, maybe for some people, but you don't want it to be any. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, but not an Easter egg hunt. 
Yeah. Yeah. What do they call it? <laughs> geo tracking? Is it geo tracking where they're like, okay, everybody, to find my will, you've got to go to these coordinates. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't do that. Make it very easy for people to know where it's at and find it. Okay. Now, here's one of the recommendations I give at all my workshops. In fact, we raffled these off at my workshops la uh, before COVID in 2019 is a, a safe. You can get a fireproof document safe for sometimes under 50 bucks at Target or Walmart. Um, the little more robust ones that I like that are fireproof and this and that could be 70 or 80 bucks. But get one, put it in a closet under the shoes, put it somewhere. Uh, make sure this person that you, your That's executor. That's where all burglars go to look though. Okay, don't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, the closet under the shoes? Mm. I knew it would be here. Okay, put it in the, <laughs> let's see, in Bernie, he put it and put it in the freezer. Put it in the freezer. Ooh, there you go. Okay. That's a good one. Yeah. That might not um, be good for document preservation though, but you know. Well, if it's fireproof, it should be frozen proof. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if fire and frozen work the same way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we are idiots. Okay. Now um but get your safe, put in there. Oh, that was a goose egg. <laughs> nah, nah, that was good. I love it. We're 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 riffing. We're riffing. We're riffing. Okay. Um you want to put in there your titles to certain assets you might have, your passport, your will, um, your uh, birth certificate, marriage certificates, anything of any value that needs to be documented. There are a few things you still need originals for people. So put those okay. in, you're safe. Now again, if you listed an executor or some, maybe the backup too, they need to know what's in there and they need to know the code. Yes, combination. Co combination. <laughs> <laughs> We're so old school. You know what I was going to say earlier? Just write down your will and fax it to us. <laughs> yeah, what, what's a fax? All right. I'm just happy to live in a world where there's no more faxes. Yeah, I was watching Die Hard, the original Die Hard with Bruce Willis, just doing mm -hmm. some work at the desk the other day. And when he's at the airport, they fax a document. Yeah. In. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I haven't yeah. seen that forever. Okay. If for okay. some of you young people are like, what's a fax? Um, yeah. It's F-A-X. Look it up. You might be able to see it on Wikipedia. They probably have one at the Museum, museum of Natural yeah. History. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or Maybe something. you might inherit one from your grandma or grandpa one day in yeah. their handwritten will. Yeah. I leave my grandson <laughs> the fax, the Samsung 2000 and, yeah. the, and the Commodore 64 with two joysticks. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. Now, here's a few other items. If you have pets, you may want to add an article for pets. I leave the I I want my the following individual to receive my dog Fido or my cat Sam Duffy. What's Duffy? That's right. Duffy, Matt's Duffy. dog is named cat's named Duffy. Um, guns. Uh, we are we are on the cusp of releasing our new gun trust this year. So for those that own guns, you want to have a trust. You can uh, register guns more easily, quickly, and effective. Um, I know some of you are very anti-guns. Don't be offended. This, some people love them. Some people love pets. Some people hate pets. Don't don't judge. Um, <laughs> you might want to leave some money to charity. You might have an article of, I want money to go to charity and I want to create a foundation, take X dollars of my state and create a foundation for the purpose of X. Um, yeah, you and you would have typically done that up in the specific bequest section, mm -hmm. you know, or specific distribution se section where you'd say, this comes off the top. I want a hundred grand to go to the, you know, Red Cross or whatever yeah. to yeah. XYZ church. Yeah. Now what's interesting. Okay. Now here's the big issue. If your life is very simple and you don't have assets, really, not any rental real estate or a home and no real children um, to speak of yet or whatever, a, a will may just be fine. You could be a young person just starting to build your wealth. Great. But I'm telling you, I implore of you people, if you have real estate, personal home, rentals, LLCs, a small business, um, Children, second marriage, first marriage, whatever. Even the single people, it can be more complicated. We don't know where stuff's going. You don't have some greedy spouse waiting there for you, you know, that knocked you off. Watch Dateline. Uh, so, you know, every Dateline, it's just, yeah. it's, it's getting old. You know, it's like, it really is. Who yeah, did it? Who did it? And about 30, you know, it's the spouse. How hard is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, 
get a trust. Do the full-on estate plan. Put it in your budget this year. This was a very crazy last 12 months. The, if the pandemic didn't make us think about our own mortality and possibly dying, it's a wake-up call. So call us up, get into the full-on estate plan, and then you don't have it in court. You don't, Your will goes with it. We give you a will with your trust, and it's all taken care of. Lots of conversations about your unique situations. But for some of you, this hopefully was great. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's hit a few other things to know. I want to just mention there are beneficiary designations on certain assets that are going to control. Even if you have a will yes. that you just signed that is enforceable, what you put on your beneficiary designation in your bank account, on your life insurance policy, and on your retirement accounts, those three would be the main ones. Mm -hmm. That's who's getting it. So if you're like, well, I put, you know, I, I don't know who's on my life insurance policy. I don't know who's on my retirement account. I set up with my 401k 20 years ago. You know, go look, update that. Don't think that your will that you just did right now solves that. Yeah. This does not override a beneficiary designation on those three things. Yeah, no, totally. And I'll add, this is where there are bombshells. Uh, there could be a, a mistress or a mister. Um, British is, you know, bridges over Madison County. You know, that oh, was okay. yeah. the mister. A mister. It could have been, okay. you know, Clint Eastwood. Happy to, happy to say I don't know that movie. <laughs> Your wife never suckered you into bridges over Madison County? Yeah. Oh, no, man. my ex-wife. Nope. Oh, thank like goodness. Dodged a bullet there. Yeah. No, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but this is where it is, you know, because you could put a beneficiary on your 401k, your IRA, your HSA, retirement account of any sort or life insurance. And it doesn't matter what's in the will. So if you're going to drop those bombshells, that's where you do it. Um, and here's another odd one because I'm out here in Idaho, farm country, is it's kind of been this old school route of, oh, I'll just put one of the kids on, kids on the deed to the farm with rights and survivorship. So if I die, there's no probate. I don't even need to put it in the will. I'll just put their name on title. Oh my gosh. Now you've got five other kids standing around going, uh, did Johnny really just inherit the million dollar yeah. farm that makes no cash, but it's worth a million dollars? And what do we get? You know, and Old farmer thought, well, my oldest child gets the farm and no one else gets anything. And I just put his name on title. May not be the best estate planning route to take. So yeah, be careful trying to avoid a will by doing some crazy stuff. Yep. Yeah, this is easy. You know, you, you could be done by now. I mean, all the, the little commentary and jokes along the way was plenty of time to think it all through. You are done. Yep. Yeah. For those of you in those states. And let me say this too, just, you know. This is not a substitute for legal advice. Your specific situation, you can do it. We're just trying to educate you and help you and give you the right way to do it. We're attorneys. We can't give you the advice for all 50 states. It's impossible to do that right now in, in a one format thing like this. But hopefully we gave you the groundwork. Mark laid out the states where you just need to have a signature, have your name, date, and it be in your handwriting. If you're in those other states, remember, you'll need two witnesses or and sometimes a notary in order to validate this handwritten will that you've signed. Yep. I love it. All right. Okay. Everybody, thank you. We know this is a longer podcast than usual, but you just knocked out your will. Please take care of it, treasure it, and you're going to need to upgrade it to a, a full estate plan, whether it's this year or next. Put it on your to-do list, part of your 10-year yeah. plan. We're here for you. No matter what state you're in, we've got uh, yeah. 10 attorneys here that can help you out in one form or fashion on this process. Thanks, everybody. And now, yeah. I was going to just say, let, before you did the thanks, if I could. Okay. I was just going to say, you know, you can now go bungee jumping, yes. skydiving, yes. climb Everest, any of those things, because you did the responsible thing and got your will done. Yeah, you're done. You can, your life, you can leave a, live a reckless life this weekend <laughs> and know that your affairs are in order. So you got carte blanche to do whatever you want. And uh, next week, open forum, folks. So send in your questions by going to MainStreetBusiness.com. Uh, type on post a question and easy schmeasy. There you go. And sign up for the newsletter if you have not yet. Lots of good articles and information every week in our newsletter. Make sure you open it on occasion or some email <sighs> algorithm will kick you out and you won't get it anymore. You'll be like, where's the newsletter? Well, you never open it. So they figured you didn't want it. So. Make sure you open it every week just to see if there's any important notices. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Thank you.